Robert Mugabe is the megalomaniac who presided over the death of his nation. He came to power by fighting to liberate his country, then turned what was Africa's breadbasket into a killing field. Thirty years ago, blacks and whites contested ownership of the rich, fertile lands of Rhodesia. Eventually, the white farmers gave up, which left Mugabe searching for a practical solution to the land problem. The fate of Zimbabwe was sealed here in Lancaster House, where the freedom fighters met in 1979 to draft a constitution and bring white rule to an end. Lord Carrington, Britain's foreign secretary, orchestrated the talks on a constitution for Zimbabwe. He wanted the whites to remain owners of their farms. If they gave up their land, it must be voluntarily, and they had to be compensated. Robert Mugabe, an ardent Marxist who detested British colonial pomp and power. He wanted to nationalize the land, and he didn't want to pay compensation to white farmers. Joshua Nkomo, the larger-than-life freedom fighter, he wanted to leave white farmers on the land but charge them rent. Joshua Nkomo wanted uh, organized land, land police, but uh, just because uh, he comes from a minority tribe, uh, his views were overrun by the cronies of Mugabe. That's what I think. But I think uh, Joshua Ngomo was the rightful person to... If he was the, given the chance to be the president of this country, I think uh, all these chaos may not, may not have been like, like the situation which is today. Nkomo's plan was torn up, first because Carrington insisted on enshrining private land ownership in the Constitution, and then by a terrible act of betrayal by Mugabe. Mugabe double-crossed Nkomo and destroyed him politically. His henchmen killed up to 20,000 of Nkomo's supporters in Matabeleland. With Nkomo out of the way, the contest was reduced to a battle of two ideologies, one championed by Mugabe, the other by Carrington. When whites grabbed most of Rhodesia's fertile land, the blacks were herded onto reservations. Their resentment grew over the generations. No matter how much land was redistributed to black farmers, there was not enough to give everyone an equal amount of the good land. With no clear solution, the obstinate Mugabe clung to power, enjoying a life of luxury. The Queen of England honoured him, while Zimbabwe slid into anarchy. Frustrated because he could not solve the land problem, Mugabe then turned against his own people and crushed them into submission. Mugabe used violence to reward his own military chiefs and political cronies with land grabbed from white farmers. As he ran out of ideas, Mugabe turned against his own people, stole the election and crushed them. Um, people are being uh, threatened, intimidated, and uh, MDC supporters, the opposition supporters are being tortured in Zimbabwe for supporting Morgan Changrai's MDC. Some are even being raped. Women are the most vulnerable, women and kids. Joshua and Como's plan was built on the idea that the land should belong to everyone who lived in Zimbabwe. We don't believe in trading land or selling land. And in any government that I lead, you can be certain those practices must go. That does not mean we will be taking people's land. It means that other people who haven't got money we will have a chance to use land which is the common property of everybody. Once you use land, that land belongs to you, but you have not bought it. You cannot sell it to someone. The land belongs to the people, but everything on that land is yours. Joshua and Como's combination of land and tax policies would have united everybody, regardless of color. That policy was offered to the people of Zimbabwe in the election of March 2008 by the Movement for Democratic Change and its president, Morgan Swangarai. Although Swangarai won the election, Mugabe refused to relinquish power and he pulled the same trick as he played on Nkomo. As a nation, Zimbabwe has now imploded. Morgan Swangarai has survived. He remains the only viable option for the future of his country. Zimbabwe needs Joshua and Como's plan, which is the key to prosperity, not just for strife-torn nations of Africa, but for any nation that wants to abolish poverty.
por uma outra que todos conhecem. Não é? Hã? 